Hi guys, I'm Serge from Discovering Destinations, and I want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of Discovering Your Rail. This is actually our second video for Discovering Your Rail. So in case you missed the first one, we're going to leave the link at the very top and feel free to add it to your save list for later. Today's focus is going to be on reservations. And so we're going to show you highlights for reservation methods, show you how to check for the train availability by running various simulations. We're also going to share tips on how to avoid overpaying and just overall maximizing the use of the pass. Let's get started by heading over to the Euro website to show you the interface. As described in our previous video, we finalized the purchase for our Euro passes roughly 10 days before landing in Europe. Once you complete your Euro purchase, you'll get immediate access to the website to start planning your trip. Here's a quick look at making a trip selection. Pretty simple for the most part. But this led to some more concerns. For example, what's the difference between reservation optional and required? And how do we acquire the reservation tickets? There was something that left us unsure about this process. As you can see from the booking terms page, e-tickets can take up to two days to be emailed and didn't appear to be available for all countries. Also, the delivery of paper tickets meant longer delivery times and a need for a fixed address. Most of our trips were either last minute or booked on the fly, so we didn't have the luxury of staying an extended amount of time at the same hotel waiting for the tickets to arrive. This is why we assessed the Euro website might be best for the early planners, especially good for those wanting to reserve their tickets weeks or even months in advance. Since the website reservation method wasn't clear to us, we wanted clarification and we wanted to be safe, which is when we made our way to the SNCF ticket offices to start booking upcoming trips. At the SNCF in France, we booked trips to Versailles, Mont Saint-Michel, Strasbourg, and all the way up to Interlaken and Munich. We found some fees quite high, especially for TGV. We recall spending as much as 30 euros per ticket. And although we had peace of mind with our tickets, it was on our way to Munich when the train attendant asked us why we had four tickets between the two of us. Essentially, the SNCF sold us extra tickets, which were not necessary for our global URL pass. To this date, we're not quite sure how and when, but we started using the URL application called Rail Planner. It was so clear and simple, so we started using it on a regular basis. It clearly showed us the train schedules and which trains needed reservations and which ones didn't. We learned from our previous mistakes, and from this moment on, we just avoided required reservation trains as much as possible and hopped on virtually any train we wanted. Here's what the app looks like and how we defined which trains required reservations and which ones did not. Okay, next we're simulating our return trip from Fusen to Munich. Here you'll see there's a train leaving every hour and every second train is a direct trip and we would prefer that since we don't have to worry about a connection. The same thing goes for our next simulation, when we traveled from Munich to Salzburg. Now here there's a red line, but this is merely a different type of train called EC, which means Eurocity train. Now here's where it gets interesting. Remember when I mentioned earlier that it was possible to avoid reservations required? Well look at our Salzburg to Budapest simulation. The train leaving at 2.08 does not require a reservation, while the other ones do. Sure, in this case, you'll need to board another train, but the trip duration is roughly the same with five hours of travel time. And we're avoiding potential complications with reservations. This just means one more train departure with peace of mind. We really love Budapest, by the way. The food was great, super sceneries of both Buda and Pest, separated by the Danaup. Here's another simulation leaving Bratislava in direction to Vienna. 
Here we have a similar situation, yet two options without seat reservations. By the way, if you check out Vienna, feel free to try their Zascher Tort and let us know what you think. Then we did Vienna to Prague and Prague to Berlin, and those were all similar situations. So by this time, we were getting really used to hopping on and off the trains. The following trips were so smooth sailing, we couldn't be happier. However, our trips to Poland, Finland, Sweden, and Denmark pretty much all required reservations. We also needed to make a reservation from Berlin to Warsaw. It wasn't all bad though. We recall making reservations in Warsaw with direction to Krakow, and we got the tickets free of charge. Also, traveling from Helsinki to Turku was very cheap. So overall, we're really happy with the such great use of the pass, since it was rather a large purchase. For your info, it's also possible to filter out the reservations required trains just by checking it off. Now the app has changed since we made this video, but we feel that it remains very similar to the old platform with a minor facelift, which is why we're posting this video regardless. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Our goal today was to share our experience from the URL Pass, and uh, we hope that we helped you uncover whether you wanted to purchase it or not. That being said, if you have any outstanding questions or comments that you would like to share with us, please feel free to do so. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found value in this video and subscribe if you want more. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time.